Hi guys and welcome back to Pandora's Box. This video will be the first of a two-part series on different ways to create a bootable backup of your OpenCore Hackintosh install. In the first video we'll be covering software backups and in the second video we'll cover using backup hardware. Now in a previous video I covered using Carbon Copy Cloner to create a bootable OpenCore backup and that at the time was the go-to for that process. Unfortunately, since Apple has changed its file system from HFS to APFS after Catalina, i.e. from Big Sur and onwards, Carbon Copy Cloner can no longer produce bootable macOS backups. And this has caused many an issue for a Hackintosh user. But there is a way around this, albeit a long one, as you will see. What I will cover in this video is a solution to that problem using Apple's migration process. So let's begin. Now in preparation for this, you'll need two external hard drives. One that is a macOS installer USB and one that is the same capacity or larger than your existing macOS system hard drive. This drive will be formatted as APFS, so any warning here that data will be lost. With regards to the installer drive, I have previously uploaded tutorials showing you how to download macOS using the Mist app and how to create a USB installer using the Tinu app. Links for those tutorials will be listed in the description below. So you can go and follow those and they should be able to help you create an installer drive. And then you can come back and continue on with this tutorial. As you can see, I've already created an installer using Tinu. Now once you have an installer, you'll need to be able to boot it from a working EFI from your system. So to do that, it's quite easy using OpenCore Auxiliary Tools. I'll list a link in the description of where you can download this, so I'll just open it up. And in the top bar, you will see an icon called Mount ESP. Click on that and it will list your drives. Now we're wanting to mount my existing system hard drive now if you're not sure which of these that is you can go to disk utility and it will list drives so for instance install mac os venturia which is my installer drive it says it's disk 4 but i want to mount the efi from the system drive first so I will click mount and not mount an open config plist. I don't want the config plist, I just want to mount the EFI. It will ask for your password that you use to log into your computer. And it will mount the EFI. I'll just close these windows. And you can see it's mounted the EFI up there. Now we'll go back and we'll repeat the process. You know, open core auxiliary tools and I will click on mount for the Ventura installer which as you can see has come up down here I can open that I can close open core auxiliary tools and if I mount the EFI from the hard drive just there now you can see the one from the installer doesn't have an EFI folder in there. So what we want to do is copy the one from the system hard drive across to the installer drive. There you go, that was simple. Once that is done, finally what I want you to do is open the installer and create a new folder called Tools. and we'll copy across the open core auxiliary tools into that tools folder i'll move tinu in there as well and there we go we are done now all you need to do is restart the computer and we go from that in the next section Now that you have created your installer and moved over a working EFI onto it, we can restart and boot from that installer. Now just before I go ahead with that, I do apologise for any loss of quality in the next section 
as I don't have a high quality capture card as of yet. Maybe that's something for the future. So let's restart. So once we get to the open core bootloader menu, you can see that any drives attached that have an EFI on them will appear in the list. For instance, here you can see that my original open core system drive is on there, along with the installer drive that we made earlier. So we're going to choose the installer drive to boot from and click enter. What we're now doing is going through the Mac OS new system install process. Only don't panic, we're not going to harm your existing system. So now that we've arrived at the macOS recovery and install menu, we need to format our external drive for use. To do that, we select disk utility from the menu and click on continue. Once in disk utility, Select the drive that you want to use as a backup from the list on the left. Then click Erase from the top. In here, you'll be able to rename the drive to whatever you want it. I'm going to keep it the same. And choose APFS as the format. Then click Erase. When it is finished, click done and then close disk utility. You can now select macOS installer from the list, click continue. Continue again. And agree. So here is where you need to choose your external backup and not your existing system drive to install on. For me, the icon helps make it stand out as well as the fact that I named it slightly differently, which helps define between the two and you don't select the wrong one. So I'll select my external backup and click continue. As this is a long-winded process with many reboots, to shorten things down, I've jumped to each of the reboots and show you the choices that it makes in the open core bootloader menu. And then in the next section, we will continue with the final part of the installation. So the installation process is almost finished with the final part of the process and this is where all the magic happens. Click get started and we'll carry on with the installer menus. Choose your country from the list and click continue. If you're happy with your language, click continue again. Not now and continue again. Now we're at the migration system. This is where it all happens. From the list, make sure from a Mac, Time Machine Backup or Startup Disk is selected and then click Continue. You'll now be presented with a list of drives that have a bootable system already on them. Select your original system drive that you want to back up from and click Continue. Now you will see a list of all the items that it's going to copy across, including the system file system. This is what makes it bootable. So make sure everything is selected and click continue. And don't worry, this is not going to delete anything on your existing system hard drive. It's only making a copy of the items that it requires. This section is where you set a password to be able to log on to your backup system. 
I personally choose a different password from my original system just to define between the two. So you insert that. Click set password. And then click continue. It will now take a while, depending on how much data that you have to back up and it reboots a couple of times. So I will speed through and catch up with you at the end to finalize the backup. We are now almost finished. Click done for the migration assistant and log in using the new password that we set. As you log in, it will ask you to sign into your iCloud and any other background tasks that you have going. I'm not going to fill those in for the sake of this tutorial, but you would fill them in with the details that you used on your original system hard drive. And there we are, we're logged in and there's our desktop. We now have one final thing that we need to do. And that is copy across the EFI to the new backup. We will do this the same way that we did at the beginning of the tutorial by opening OpenCore Auxiliary Tools, mounting each of the EFIs of the installer drive and the backup drive. Opening each of those drives. And as you can see, the backup drive doesn't have an EFI folder in there. So we just copy it across from the installer drive and close the windows. We can now eject the installer and we'll reboot from the new backup just to show you that it works. So here we are at the OpenCore bootloader menu. I'll select my backup drive to boot from and click enter. Now, as this is the first time it's booting from it, the process is going to take a little longer than usual. The next time you boot from it, it will be a lot faster. So I'll just speed this bit up. And we're in. So as you can see, that's one way of creating a new bootable backup of your OpenCore Hackintosh system. And as you can tell, it is quite long winded. It's around an hour and a half. And now that you have it, you can use Carbon Copy Cloner to copy across any of your files and documents, etc. onto it. But never try to copy across any of the system elements, as this will render it unbootable. But in my next video, I'll be showing you how to use hardware to do the same thing, and it takes a fraction of the time. So thanks for watching, 
and click like, subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when that new video comes out.